Welcome back for another installment of the National Museum of the Marine Corps Weapons Wednesday. I'm Jonathan Bernstein, the museum's arms and armor curator. Today we're going to look at a tale of two rifles, the American T1 Pedersen rifle and the Japanese Type 4 semi-automatic rifle based on the Pedersen. Our story starts in the late 1920s when the U.S. Army began its search for a semi-automatic battle rifle to replace the World War I vintage M1903 Springfield. Research into semi-automatic rifles had begun prior to World War I, and several designs were actually fielded in limited numbers by most of the belligerents by 1917. However, the bolt-action rifle remained the standard throughout the war's duration. By the early 1920s, though, several U.S. firearms designers were working on the next-generation military rifle. One of those designers was John Douglas Pedersen, who began his career at Remington Arms. One of his more well-known designs was the Pedersen device, a system fielded in 1918 that would convert the M1903 Mark I rifle to a semi-automatic weapon firing a pistol cartridge with a 32-round box magazine. Today we're going to discuss Pedersen's innovative rifle design. Pedersen designed his rifle around the 276 caliber round, which was a quarter lighter and produced a third less heat and recoil force than the Army's 30-06 round, but had a similar trajectory and only slightly lower muzzle velocity. The rifle used a toggle-delayed blowback system, whereby the recoil from the fired round forced the bolt back and opened the hinged cover of the receiver, ejecting the round and picking up the next from the magazine. It operated very similarly to the uh, German P08 Luger of World War I fame. Pedersen's rifle initially was the front-runner in the early days of the Army's interest in, in a semi-automatic rifle. But in 1928, the War Department formed the Semi-Automatic Rifle Board, a tri-service organization that was to undertake the testing and development of what would become the standard U.S. military rifle across all services. The Pedersen entry was designated T1, while John Garand's entry was the T3. Of the seven rifle types entered, the T1 and T3 were evaluated as the top two and moved on to the next phase of, te phase of testing that following year. As the test program went on, however, it was clear that the T3 was a simpler and more effective design. It was also far easier to adapt to the 30 caliber cartridge that the Chief of Ordnance preferred. The museum's Pedersen rifle is serial number 13, which participated in the late 1920s test program. With the selection of the T3, however, the Peter Pedersen then began marketing his rifle overseas to Great Britain, Japan, and a handful of other countries. The Japanese had a particular interest in the rifle and purchased 12 rifles and an equal number of carbines in 1935 for a year-long test pr program. But with offensive military operations in China and expansion throughout the Pacific Rim, the Japanese focus on semi-automatic rifles drifted. It wasn't until the mid-1940s and the turn of the tide against J Imperial Japanese forces that the Japanese army shifted its focus back to semi-automatic rifles. The two rifle types that saw the most success and were closest to adoption were the Type 4 and the Type 5 semi-automatic rifles, essentially copies of both the Pedersen and Garand rifles with some modification. The museum's Type 4 serial number 8 utilized the Pedersen toggle delayed bl blowback system. The rifle has a 10-round box magazine, which would be fed with two standard Arasaka stripper clips. As you can see, there are a number of significant similarities between uh, the two rifles, including the vented stocks uh, to provide additional barrel cooling. This particular rifle was discovered by Master Gunnery Sergeant Joseph K. Marshall when he led a detachment of Marines from the USS Calpins to the Yokosuka Navy base under orders to secure all hangars, shops, barracks, and bunkers. While securing a, a tunnel complex on the base uh, where the testing was conducted, Master Sergeant Marshall found the rifle. He realized the uniqueness of this weapon and was authorized to keep it as a war trophy. He donated the weapon to the museum in 1998, where it joined our Type 5 semi-automatic rifle, currently on exhibit in the Okinawa portion of our World War II gallery. Although the Pedersen rifle was not adopted by either military, it was significant in furthering the development of semi-automatic rifle technology and remains an excellent example of what could have been had the development gone in a different direction. For more information on the Arms and Armor Collection and the other fascinating artifacts at the National Museum of the Marine Corps, please check out our website and social media pages.